Great, so in statement two, we know that Jane received responses from 80% of all companies to whom she sent a resume. So we had some basic information that she got 75% of these 24. Then there are some other values that would get us to 80% of the total. And we should have enough information to work this. We don't actually have to do the math there. So I'm pretty sure each statement alone is sufficient. Great. Let's keep going. We have a lot more examples to work today. So the, here's a good ratio question. Let's take a look. We have the ratio of a man's tie to the number of dress shirts he owns is 3 to 5. Let's dissect that language. So a ratio of a man's ties to dress shirts. is 3 to 5. Just pulling the language out. So I know that 5 times the number of ties is equal to 3 times the number of shirts. Just cross multiply here. If the man buys 4 new ties and 4 new dress shirts, what is the new ratio of ties to dress shirts? So what can I do with this information? I want to say that if he buys four new ties and four new shirts, then what is the ratio? How can we figure that out? Can we plug in? We're not really sure where we're starting. We don't know the number of ties, the actual number of ties and dress shirts. We know their ratio, but depending on where that number, those actual numbers are, adding four more to each value could do a lot to the ratio. So we don't really have enough information to answer this question. Here's a really good one. This will ex uh, explain some of the techniques I really like working on these percent questions. I sort of call them uh, a little percent tree and you'll see how it sort of breaks down. We saw it a little bit earlier, but this is a better example. So uh, go ahead and just read this paragraph to yourself really quickly and we'll work this question together. So the GMAT loves percent questions, especially when they don't give you any real numbers. It's percent of some Im imaginary thing. Some, there are a certain number of chairs in a room and 60% of them get up and walk out. So there's 60% of the chairs in this room are obviously magical. They can get up and walk out of the room, but they never tell us how many chairs are actually in the room. Let's actually pick a number that we can work with. So last year, a clothing designer sold 60% of his new designs. Let's say he makes 100 new designs, right? And we like using 100 on percent questions. And he sold 60% of them. So that means he sold 60. This is my little information management trick on percent questions. This year, he designed 10% fewer. So 10% fewer. Well, 10% fewer of 100 is 90. That was pretty straightforward. And sold 90% of them. So we want 90% of 90. So 9 times 9, 81. So, the, um, so it was 60 sold last year, 81 sold this year. The amount of designs the designer sold last year is approximately what percent less than the amount of designs he sold this year? And we learned earlier in our GMAT quantitative lessons that the percent change is the difference over the original. And this is where the, this question is trying to trip us up even further. Hey, we got to remember that the percent change is difference over original. We got to remember what the original is here. They're looking for a percent less. 
81 is the original. The difference is 81 minus 60 is 21. And the original is 81. And if we reduce these, Any help on this one, Jay? Well, we can see that 20 is about a fourth of 80. It's close. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's about a quarter, mm -hmm. but they both have one added to them. Mm -hmm. So will that make the percent go up or down? I think it'll go up a little bit. I think so. So 20 is just not close. We need something closer to a quarter. And we can reduce this a bit, right? Can't we, Jake? Mm -hmm. What can we reduce it to? Factor of 3. Okay, so that gives us 7 and what, like 12? 27. 27, even better. So we can quickly do this if we want. It actually doesn't take that long, and it'll get us to 26%. This actually, if you think it takes a long time to do this, it doesn't. You can crunch good old-fashioned long division in usually less than 30 seconds, uh, which is not that long, and it's enough time to make sure you get the question right. Don't freak out when you get here and just pick, guess an answer. Uh, go ahead and just crunch the number. So let's review this question. Last year, a clothing designer sold 60% of his designs. They don't tell us the number of designs. The GMAT loves this exact scenario. It's a percent question with some unknown number of actual things. So let's make a number of actual things, and that's exactly what we did. And so as a GMAT robot, I can anticipate this. The GMAT is going to ask me a question where it's a percent question with some unknown actual number of things. I should be able to anticipate that. I said 100 things. We took 60% of it, it was 60 sold, 10% fewer, pretty straightforward is 90, 90% of that is 81, the difference between the two, they want a percent less, so it's difference over original. We simplified a bit, uh, and if we had to, we did a little bit of long division, and we knew that this was not close enough. We could at least eliminate that if it was getting down to crunch time, and if we crunch the numbers, pretty sure we'll get 26%. Great. So, the probably the most time-consuming piece of that question might have been doing a little bit of long division but if we're anticipating this type of question, we could have gotten through that first part very, very quickly. So let's take a look at another question here. We have plenty more to look at today. Go ahead and read it real quickly and we'll work on this one together. Great, let's just break it down into pieces. We see some fractions here, eight and four. Let's work with some numbers that work well with these fractions. Jug A is one eighth full of milk. So let's say jug A has eight liters of milk. Eight liters, sorry, is how big it is. Um, eight liters. And this has one eighth full, so it's one liter full. Great, move on. Jug B, which is three times the size of jug A. So three times eight is still 24. And it is three quarters full. So three quarters of 24 should be 18. And if the milk in jug A is poured into jug B, then jug B will be filled to what fraction of its volume? So this one liter, liters full. If this one liter is added here, we'll get 19 liters out of the 24 possible. And look at what we have here, that exact value. So there's not really much math on this page. We were left with some really simple arithmetic that we can do in our heads, but the trick here was to 
actually find a value and stop working with these fractions and, turn, and making algebraic equations and things and just anticipate, just like we saw before. The GMAT loves this, this, this situation where they don't give us the actual number of things and they want us to take fractions of it or percents of it, same thing really. So jug A we said, and we saw these two fractions, I want you to be able to do this when you, when you come across this type of question again because you'll see these questions. Uh, we have a couple of fractions, we wanted to pick some numbers that work well with them so I went with 8. So jug A can hold 8 liters, it's 1 8th full, so that it had 1 liter of it full. Jug B is 3 times the size of jug A, so we're not creating an equation there, we're just picking some basic numbers. It's 3 quarters full, that gives us 18 liters. If these two were added together, 19 out of the 24 liters would be full, which would be 19 24ths of its volume. Great. Awesome. Let's look at another question. Go ahead and read this one really quickly to yourselves and we'll work it together. This is a great example of a question that you can essentially, this is not how I actually do it on the GMAT, but we can answer it at the end of reading it the first time as long as we're turning the words into figures and numbers we can work with as we're doing it. A spa charges $100 for a massage on Saturdays and Sundays. So on the weekend, Saturdays and Sundays, it charges $100. Great. And 75% of that price during the week. So during the week, they charge $75. If the spa provided a total of 40 massages during a given week, and 12 of those massages were done on the weekend. So 12 on the weekend, that should give us 1,200, which means of the 40, what, 28? were done uh, during the week. So already we can eliminate A because we already are over that and if we crunch this it's really not that bad. 8 times 5 should give us what? 40. 8 times 7 plus 4 should give us 60. 2 times 5 will give us 10. 2 times 7 will give us 14. I think I'm doing this correctly. Uh, so we get 0, 5, and 7. Did we do that right? No, okay, yeah, I'm like, that's something about this doesn't seem right. I forgot my 0 here. There we go. Well, just trust your gut. If you miss something, just Double check, 600 plus 1500 will give us 2100, plus our 1200 will give us 3300. There we go. I was going to end up with a number here, uh, 1200 plus, um, I was, you know, doing it, I forgot this zero, I was getting 1200 plus 750, which just isn't a value on here, so that was certainly going to lead me back to here just check my math when I'm doing really simple arithmetic and I'm writing it on my scratch pad it took me no time to find out what I had missed because these numbers just didn't match here so I just reviewed what I'd done and I got it quickly resolved it took me about 10 seconds uh, to address that issue and it's this technique of writing things down not doing things in your head and simplifying to arithmetic that gets you through any hiccups that you have uh, while you're taking the test because you're rushed, you're pressured, and you're trying to go quickly. In the end, we didn't do too much more than some arithmetic to solve this question. So we really just dissected it as we went. A spa charges $100 on the weekend, 75% of that during the week. It does, does 40 total massages, 12 on the weekend, gives us this total, 28 left. Multiply, add these two numbers, and we're done. So anticipate these sorts of word problems on the GMAT. 